The public health approach to public safety is based on the fact that there are critical moments we can intervene before someone commits a violent crime or while someone is stuck in a continuous cycle of violence and do so in a way that prevents that person from engaging and committing future acts of violence. Police respond to emergencies after the crime has occurred, but how do we get to the root of the crime to prevent it from happening in the first place? First, let's identify where our current police emergency response falls short. The police couldn't prevent a carjacking that ended up crashing into a house just a block over from mine the other morning. The police couldn't prevent the shootout that took place across the street from my house from an elderly neighbor's front porch. The police couldn't prevent the neighbor from selling sex on the corner while her handler brandishes guns at passersby. Even during the unprecedented increase in police and even military presence over the past few weeks, we still have had two people shot in our ward. What do all of these acts of violence have in common? Community intelligence gathered by the Office of Violence Prevention, which I established in my first year in office, indicates that these crimes are all gang and group related, and the police intelligence backs that conclusion up. And something else they all have in common, that all of these acts of violence are preventable. But again, Police cannot and have not stopped these crimes. So how do we stop them? Violence prevention and intervention is where the public health approach to public safety comes to life. It is the idea that violence is like an infectious disease that can be treated, prevented, and even cured. But like an infectious disease, violence also spreads. Think about it. Someone gets shot, that person or their family or friends want to get revenge and then shoot someone else and it goes back and forth and spreads. Also, children who witness domestic violence in their homes are disproportionately likely to then grow up and be perpetrators or victims of violence themselves. What if those children and their families could get the support they need in time to ensure that the children grow up with a healthy mindset free of the fear and confusion that family violence can cause? This is a critical moment in which we can stop the spread of violence. Violence prevention curricula, like the one I'm developing with school board director Kim Caprini, help to promote strong, healthy leadership among youth. They are empowered to be role models among their peers, influencing positive behavior, and being able to engage in conflict mediation and restorative justice. This is a critical moment in which we can stop the spread of violence. When a gang or group has taken over a gas station parking lot and is engaging in dangerous behavior, people who are specifically trained to work with gang and group members along with providers who can connect folks with housing and jobs, can start showing up and talking to people. Some of those folks will accept help to get out of their situation and go on to live safe and healthy lives. This is a critical moment in which we can stop the spread of violence. Gangs and groups are some of the largest contributors to community violence in medium to large sized cities. We know that about half of 1% of the population of a city actually is responsible for over 60% of a city's violence, particularly around gun violence. If we focus our public safety resources on these 2,000 people, offering them resources and opportunities to change their lives, then we will address the majority of our city's violent crime. The Office of Violence Prevention, which was permanently funded under my leadership starting in 2018, is home to several successful gang and group intervention strategies that are beginning to transform the landscape and trajectory of community violence across Minneapolis. Programs like Group Violence Intervention, Next Step, and Cure Violence, over 500 people have made the choice to get out of the life and to stay safe, alive, and free. We must 
keep investing in and growing these efforts so we can reach those 2,000 folks to prevent and intervene in a majority of the violence in our community. We must build out programs that support healthy families and communities. We can save lives. We can cure the disease of violence. Together, we can and will build a safe and peaceful ward for in Minneapolis.